Today on an all new Dr. Phil. A teenage girl is stabbed to death and the two people charged are her two best friends. They stood over her body and watched her die. Why would they commit this shocking crime? Sheila isn't a sociopath. She killed my daughter. She's just all smiles the day after the murder. Exclusive interviews. Tell us what you read in her diary about the night of the murder. And secret tapes. The really big information that I'm hearing is... I have a parent alert. The summer after their sophomore year in high school, 16-year-old teenage girls Skylar, Rachel, and Sheila were the best of friends until one of them went missing. It is a chilling murder. A teenage girl is stabbed to death, and the two people charged are her two best friends. Skylar Neese disappeared from her Star City home in July 2012. Investigators pulled the security camera video from Skylar's apartment building and saw her jumping into a car parked near her window. A friend claims she picked Skylar up and they went on a ride but brought her back to the house an hour later. That's where the trail ends cold. A body found in Wayne Township, Pennsylvania in January has been identified as Skylar Neese. Six months after Skylar disappeared, a stunning admission. 16-year-old Rachel Schoff admitted she killed her, but she said she did not do it alone. Rachel Show told investigators she and another classmate lured Skylar out of her bedroom that night and into their car. Rachel told cops that she and Sheila had driven the unsuspecting Skylar to this remote spot and then stabbed Skylar to death because they no longer wanted to be her friend. Rachel Show pled guilty to murder and at Sheila's arraignment, she was charged as an adult. We learned some details and Rachel Show stepped forward and confessed now her co-conspirator has done the same. Sheila Eddy has pleaded guilty to Skylar's murder. After pleading the first degree murder, Sheila Eddy now faces life in prison with possible parole after 15 years. Well, David and Mary Niece are still struggling trying to comprehend what happened to their little girl. How is it possible that Skylar's two best friends at this 16 years old, could turn on her and stab her to death. Here's their story. My daughter, Skylar Niece, disappeared on July 6, 2012. Skylar was my mother's only child. Always looked out for others, tried to help her friends. Skylar was a daddy's girl, big time. Dad, look at she was just a fantastic little girl. Sheila was the best friend. They called each other sisters, always saying we're sisters forever. Skylar first met Sheila when both of them were about eight years old. You couldn't hardly get them apart. They were at school all day together, talked on the phone all night. <laughs> we started having weird feelings about Sheila from the time she moved here. Of course, you can't pick your child's friends. So we just tried to accept her. Sheila felt like she was the center of the universe. If it didn't involve her, she didn't care about it. Sheila more or less controlled every move Skylar made. I did not know Rachel near as well as Sheila. Rachel just came to their school and into their lives. Seemed like an all-around happy teenager to me. They were always together. I never even vaguely thought Skylar may have ever been in danger. The day the scholar went missing, it started out pretty normal. I clocked out and came home at lunchtime, and I popped her door open, and her bed hadn't been made. And then um, I looked to the right and saw the window was open, and I freaked. I said, Mary, Mary, Skylar is not home. So she said, call Sheila. So I called Sheila. I said, have you seen Skylar? She said, no. I said, when's the last time you talked to her? She said, last night, about midnight. That as soon as her work had called and asked if she was coming, I got off the phone. I told Dave, call 911. I said, there's something wrong. Well, in the meantime, Sheila had called back and, and she said, Mary, I need to really tell you what happened last night. She snuck out of her window and we went riding around. But we were back home before midnight. 
That is when I remembered we have security cameras. We checked the footage and we could see Skylar sneaking out her bedroom window, walking across the street and getting into a vehicle. It was some point between 12 and 12.30. So they knew that Sheila nor Rachel could have been home in bed by 12 o'clock. Why couldn't I have her going out the window? I mean, why, why, why? Sheila tried to become much, much closer to Dave and I after Skylar had disappeared. One day she did come over here and she said, can I go back to Skylar's room? I said, yes, that's fine. I went to Skylar's room with her. We sat on the bed. Sheila cried. She was saying, how could she do this to us? I'm her best friend. Why doesn't she at least call me? Looking back on that moment now, I could kill her right there on that bed. The police were telling us that they thought Sheila and Rachel were more involved than they originally thought. They knew that the last person with somebody is usually the person that knows what happened to them. I never ever suspected the girls had murdered her. On January 3rd, 2013, Rachel Soph confessed to police that she and Sheila Eddy had stabbed my daughter to death. And at one point, the cop looked at her and said, Rachel, why did you and Sheila do this? And Rachel's reply was, because we didn't want to be friends with her anymore. Well, after six months of looking for Skylar, her best friend Rachel finally broke down and confessed to her brutal murder. The details of her confession haunt Skylar's family to this very day. Rachel told the investigator, Sheila was definitely the mastermind behind all of this. Sheila picked Skylar up in her car that night. They drove to a location about 30 miles away from here. They all three got out of the car. Rachel was standing in the back. Sheila was standing in the front. Skylar was in the middle. They had signals and they had counted down like one, two, three. And on three, that was their signal. They started stabbing. They had kitchen knives that were concealed. They pulled out the knives and started to stab Skylar. At one point, Skylar got the knife away from Rachel and stabbed Rachel in the leg with it. According to Rachel, she stopped the attack after that, but Sheila kept going. And Sheila stabbed her, stabbed her, stabbed her. She did admit that at 50 stabs, they had stopped counting. Rachel said that Skylar just kept screaming, why, why, why? So she had no idea why they would want to kill her. She actually bled out. They hit a major artery early on. Also, they stood over her body and watched her die. They tried to dig a hole and put her body in it. Because the ground was so rocky and hard, they couldn't dig a hole. Rachel told them that they had hid her body beside a log, covered her with branches and leaves. They both stripped naked then, put on a change of clothes they had brought with them, wiped down with wipes, grabbed the knives, rolled them up in a cloth, grabbed Skylar's purse, and left. When I first heard of Rachel's confession, my reaction was pure rage. There's a hate that shot through me that I've never felt before in my life. I wanted to kill both girls. I hate the girls for what they've done. I truly deep down hate them. Sheila had posted stuff on Facebook about, Skylar, please come back. I can't live life without you. Now we know it was a smoke screen. I don't care what happens to those girls. I hope they get beat every day. They can tie them up to the courthouse and whip them till they're dead. And it still would not pay for what they've done to Skylar. All right, I'm glad to meet you both. I'm terribly, terribly sorry for your loss. You're obviously still very angry about this, which I totally understand, but you are, right? Absolutely. What bothers you most about this? What haunts you as the father? As a father and every father out there, you feel it's your job to protect your family. I know I couldn't have saw this coming and I know that, but that's what really bothers me the most about it is, why did I stop it somehow? These were her best friends. Dave feels he should have been able to stop it. There's no way he could have. Sheila and Skylar had known each other since they were eight. Yes. What went wrong? We wish we knew. Yeah. No one seems to know. 
And when we come back, why did Sheila and Rachel kill their best friend, Skylar? No one seems to know for sure, but one of their friends says she may have the answer. Plus, who was the mastermind behind the evil plot? All of that after the break. I can't even picture how they could just repeatedly stab Skylar until she stopped breathing and they watched Skylar die and left her beside a road. I can't believe that for four years I was best friends with a girl who turned into being a murderer. Tomorrow on an all new Dr. Phil, he thinks he's a 10. Everything about me is amazing. You said plenty of other women would kill to be with me. And he wants her. I would love for my wife to be as nice looking like me. To look like Beyonce. This is what he wants you to do housework in. If she wants to keep her husband, I expect her to shape up. If she doesn't, you're out. So you're going to bail on her because... I'm not pretty enough. All new Dr. Phil. Tomorrow. This is Skylar's bedroom. This was her haven. Most of the memories in this room are cuddling up and watching TV, reading books every now and then. When Skylar was a baby, I did what we called a baby body slam, where I'd pick her up like this and say, baby body slam, and slam her down on the bed. And she absolutely loved it. <laughs> Sheila and Rachel spent nights with us, and they all Slept in here on the floor. I do feel closer to Skylar when I come in here, but sometimes it just hurts so bad I can't. When she first went missing, a lot of times I come in here and just sit on the bed and cry. She was always smiling. I would just want her to know how much I love her. Well, on July 6, 2012, 16 year old Skylar niece was brutally stabbed to death by her two best friends, Sheila Eddy and Rachel Schulf. Now, Chrissy, Sheila's cousin, has been close to her since the day she was born. Chrissy says she knows who was behind it, and it was not Sheila. Sheila's one of my best friends. Once I hit my teenage years, we were more like sisters. Sheila moved to Morgantown in 2010 and she was so excited to go to school with Skylar. <laughs> I love Skylar. Skylar was awesome. She was just so sweet. Sheila met Rachel her freshman year and they were also inseparable. Rachel was creepy. She gave me a very odd feeling and I had asked Sheila afterwards not to ever bring her around again. The weekend before Skylar went missing, Sheila and Skylar and I had hung out and everything was normal. We joked, we laughed. When Skylar went missing, it was so strange. She was not one to run away. She loved her friends, she loved her family. I suspected that Sheila and Rachel weren't telling the whole truth, but I never thought the whole truth was them. It was late April, and my mom said, I just want to give you a warning because it's going to come out that the girls had everything to do with that. I can't imagine Sheila saying, we have to do this, we have to stab her, we have to. one, two, three, let's go. She was just an innocent girl who was taking college classes to further her future. I have kept in touch with Sheila since she was arrested. We've been writing back and forth. Sheila has not mentioned the court hearing. She hasn't mentioned her role she played. She has been completely detached and it's almost as if she is trying to convince herself it didn't happen. I'd like people to know that Sheila isn't a psycho. She's not a sociopath. She wasn't a cat torturer. I mean, she's she was a good, good girl. Yes, she is a psychopath. She killed my daughter. She admitted she did in court. How can you say she's not a psychopath? Because I think she is. And everybody out there thinks she is, too. Let me say, I, I appreciate your being here. And 
we know you had nothing to do with this. You, and I'm you, sorry. I didn't no, 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 okay. no. Listen, you are entitled to your voice, and you say it. I, I just want to acknowledge that nobody thinks you were involved in this or an, a, a, an element or an agent uh, in this. And I, I think what Dave is saying is it, it almost sounds like you're defending her and saying she's a victim as well. I think I misworded myself. I don't mean that she isn't now. I mean that she wasn't. There were no signs of anything weird. She never said anything weird. She never came across as the type of person who could. Let's look at a tweet Sheila posted one month to the day before she was arrested. We really did go on three. We really did go on three. They say in the police report that they said, we got a plan here and we worked it out ahead of time. We're going to have signals where on three, we both act so she can't get away, all of that stuff. And a month before she's arrested, she tweets, we really did go on three. Absolutely. I even went to the police one time and said, will you leave her alone? She's going through enough. That poor girl lost her best friend as well as we lost a child. Leave Sheila alone. So quit being so hard on these right. girls. Leave them alone. They're hurting, right? Yeah. You stood up for them. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. We both did. How do you feel about that now? <laughs> I, I, I sure ain't standing up for her now. I mean, I, I feel betrayed, absolutely. I mean, I feel like somebody took advantage of me. Well, after Skyler's death, Sheila posted Facebook messages just saying how much she wanted Skyler back. She said, quote, want my best friend back. Dave, you responded, love you, Sheila. I want her back, too. Sheila writes back, thanks, guys. Love you, too, Dave. Then Dave responds, she will be home soon. Then on August 10th. All I want is for my best friend to come home. I wish I knew something to give the police a lead so she can come home, but I don't know anything. I'd do anything to have her home right now, and I wish I knew something like everybody thinks I do. Come home, Skyler. It's been five weeks too long. I miss you and love you. You responded, Dave. Hang tough, babe. Don't let things get you down. Love you. She responds, it's been hard, but I'm trying. Love you, too. Come on. I mean, if you want to look up the definition of what's now called the antisocial personality, which has historically been called psychopath and sociopath, this kind of manipulation, this lack of empathy, this lack of consciousness, this lack of remorse is right down the pike, right? Exactly. Someone who thinks they know exactly why the girls killed Skyler is here. And she's going to tell us what she knows and what she thinks right after the break. <laughs> Shania, another very close friend of Sheila and Skyler, says she may know a reason why the girls killed Skyler. Take a look. Sheila, Skylar, and I were together every weekend. If you saw one of us, you usually saw all three of us. We have definitely done things that we shouldn't have. We would usually sit in Sheila's room, listening to music or watching movies, playing on the internet. Rachel came into the picture when Sheila moved to University High School. At one point, I probably was jealous of Rachel because I felt like Sheila and Skylar were trying to replace me with Rachel. Rachel is also a redhead, which gave me a little bit more jealousy. Skylar told me one night that she, Sheila and Rachel had been drinking and Sheila and Rachel had sex with each other and Skylar kind of didn't really know what to do. I was shocked when I heard about Sheila and Rachel being sexually involved with each other. When I first heard that Skylar was missing, I got a text from Sheila and it said, have you heard from Skylar? I can't find her, her parents can't find her, the police can't find her, she's missing. She sounded completely sincere. I called Sheila and asked her what was going on and she explained to me everything that happened the night before. Sheila sounded nervous, upset, confused. She just sounded like she didn't know what was going on. 
I did ask Sheila if she was involved over and over again, and she swore to me that she knew nothing. Dave and Mary told me that Rachel confessed to her and Sheila stabbing Skylar to death. Mary said Rachel confessed, and now both of those bitches are where they belong, in jail. Rachel told the police that they had planned this, that they had hidden a shovel and clothes and cleanup products in the trunk and hid knives under their clothes for when the attack was going to happen later that evening. I can't even picture how they could just repeatedly stab Skylar until she stopped breathing and they watched Skylar die and left her beside a road. I can't believe that for four years I was best friends with the girl who turned into being a murderer. Your theory, if I understand it right, is that Skylar may have been killed because she knew about a love affair going on between Sheila and Rachel. Is that your theory? It's very possible. I, it's the only reason that would come anywhere close to being a fight. There's nothing else out there. Well, why do you think that? I don't think that they... They obviously didn't care if she knew. They did it right in front of her. But How do you know that? Skylar told me. What did she tell you? I don't know what brought it up, but Skylar told me that Sheila, her and Rachel had been at Rachel's house drinking. They were in her room and all of a sudden Sheila and Rachel started having sex with each other right in front of her. And she kind of just sat back in an awkward position like she didn't know what to do. But she didn't want to leave because she didn't want Rachel's mom to find out that they were drinking. Didn't you think that may have, they may have been concerned she was going to out them? They may have found out that she was telling people. I, I don't know. Did she ever say anything to either of you about anything like this? She did not. No. I will say, though, I did read that exact same post in her journal that you just said, yes. The post said what? That she had been locked in the bedroom. I see. She it recounted that specific exactly. on that night. So you're confident that it did happen? Yeah. Because she wrote it in real time exactly. in her diary. What did you think when you read that? I was shocked. And this is the first time you're talking about any of this. Why now? Why here? I felt really awkward talking about it. I didn't feel comfortable really talking about it, but I guess it needs to be known. It could, it's a po possible motive as to why they killed her. Just dad to dad, take me through the moment that you found out it was Sheila and Rachel that stabbed your daughter to death. My feelings at the time was rage. Um, I, I wanted justice for Skyler immediately. I wanted Skyler, I just want Skyler back. But dad to dad, I wanted to kill them both. Now we did reach out to Rachel and Sheila's attorney for a response to these allegations. Our calls and emails were not returned. And so for that reason, you know, I have to be very clear that these are allegations. You know, we weren't there. We don't know what happened uh, in that room. What we know is what they confessed to in court uh, with regard to the death of Skyler. Uh, let's take a break. When we come back, uh, it was Rachel that was the one who eventually broke down and confessed to Skyler's murder. It took Sheila a full year after Rachel's confession to finally admit guilt. Find out why some people say Sheila is the bad seed here, not Rachel, after the break. Were you with her the day after the murder? Yes. What were you doing? We were on my boat. So you're probably within 10 or 12 hours of her stabbing an innocent child to death. That's the day after That's the murder. The day. She didn't act any different. It took Sheila Eddy over a year and a half to finally admit she was involved with killing Skylar Niece. Some of Sheila's family and friends say that Rachel, not Sheila, was the mastermind behind the savage murder. However, Kelly, 
who held Rachel the day she was born and watched her grow up has a very different story to tell. Rachel was basically the child we never had. She was just such a happy child. I mean, she was a delight to be with. I met Sheila and Skylar once for Rachel's 15th birthday. These girls were delightful, but that's the night I later learned they snuck out. And I think Sheila and Skylar were used to sneaking out. And Rachel never got to do anything like that. And so now all of a sudden that became a cool thing to do. She was a handful for a single mother. I know they got into arguments. She pushed every limit that teenagers do. I realized that Rachel was gonna be trouble. The day that they reported Skylar missing, Rachel and Patricia came on the boat with us. Rachel didn't act any different. She just was glued to her phone all day. I guess she was texting Sheila, trying to find out what was going on. Twice I confronted Rachel, and I just looked at her. I said, was she alive when you left her? And Rachel went, yes! And I was like, thank God. In the fall of 2012, various parents would say, why is Rachel not cooperating? And I mean, obviously the girls were involved, but the more time kept going, and the police were just digging more and more, and the story wasn't coming out, I stopped at the house the second time. I just remember just going, tell me. Tell me you did not do this, what they are saying. Her mother waved Rachel away, and she and I hugged, and she was just crying and crying. One day I was at school, and I had the newspaper with me, and during one of the class change times, I just opened it up, and right there on the front page, in the giant words, guilty, and Rachel's beautiful picture. I don't get where Rachel never thought it was okay to kill someone. How in the world did the devil get a hold of Rachel? God bless her. God bless them both and to live with that. Well, that was Kelly speaking. Also here is Kim. Now, Kim lived next door to Rachel and considers herself to be a second mom to Rachel. She was there the night Rachel had her mental breakdown that led to her confession. Uh, so we've heard from Kelly. So, Kim, let me ask you what happened that night. A huge, huge mm -hmm. physical altercation. She picked up a lit candelabra, tried to take it over her mom's head. Um, her dad got involved. The police were called. She locked herself in her bedroom, pushed her dresser up against the door, and started screaming that she wanted to die. So, at this point, she was showing very violent behavior. Violent, violent, scary, okay. violent. She showed extreme violent tendencies after right. the fact. Um, were you with her the day after the murder? Yes, which well, I didn't know. Of course not. But what were you doing? <laughs> we were on my boat. So the day after she murders, I mean, so you're probably within 10 or 12 hours Absolutely. of her stabbing an innocent child to death. And she's, is this the actual yes. day? Yes. That's, that's the day after the murder. That's the day. Yep. And she's just all smiles on the lake. She didn't act any different. She was texting. Tell us what you read in her diary. I did not. About the night. Um, no, I was, mean, I'm saying to. Yeah, we, um, again, the FBI and the state police were showing up quite a bit with search warrants. And the first one was for electronics. Then they stumbled on her diary, her journal. And it was dated the day after the murder. And it was, God help us, uh, God help me. What happened that night is between you and I. Please forgive me for all these lies. And it went on for pages, and that caught the Trooper Barry's attention and um, during one of the search warrants. Yeah. All right, let's take a break. Next, secret tapes from one of the killer's family informants. You won't believe what they reveal. Find out why the murder weapon or weapons were never found. And what is this about a sex tape? Those answers and more when we come back. The 
really, really, really big information that I'm hearing is that they have evidence that Rachel and Shelia were really in a lesbian relationship. Tomorrow on an all-new Dr. Phil, he thinks he's a 10. You said plenty of other women would kill to be with me. And his wife's a 5. She needs to lose 20 pounds. You need to lose 20 pounds in your head. That's tomorrow. The disappearance of Skylar Neese was a mystery until out of the blue, one of her best friends came forward and confessed that she and another team had stabbed Skylar to death. Now, one news blogger, Cole Bartiromo, was determined to get answers. Nobody believed that Rachel Schoaf and Sheila Eddy killed Skylar Neese because they didn't want to be friends with her. The fact that the whole town seemed to know who the killers were and that they were still Roman free. That was diabolical to me. We have a family member of Sheila Eddy's that has been a source for our stories for eight months now. Our source confirmed that when Rachel confessed and then was released, she wore a wire to set Sheila up. Five months of Rachel Schof and Sheila Eddy hanging out and then being seen out and about in the town. Sheila going to prom when Rachel had confessed and no one understood what was going on. We exposed Sheila Eddy long before you know, anyone else was willing to. Sheila and Rachel, we started looking deep into their social media and there just seemed to be an excessive amount of sexually suggestive pictures and innuendos that there was something going on between Rachel Schof and Sheila Eddy. I don't think justice has been served. Cole, you started digging into this and you were bothered by the fact that these girls were walking around and going about their normal lives, right? Right, a year ago, about a year ago after Rachel had confessed, we received a tip on our website to look into this story. And the fact that they didn't want to be friends with Skylar and that's why they killed her was repulsive. And we went all out to uncover the truth. Now, you had an informant, correct? Multiple. Multiple informants. And one was a family member. Uh, a family member of one of the killers reached out to Cole allegedly with new information and asked to remain anonymous. Now here are some of their conversations. The voice of the anonymous source has been altered. Sheila's mom told me Rachel took the bag of their bloody clothes and knife and dumped it in Cheat Lake the day after. She went with her mom on a boat. Sheila admitted she went back the next day to go move the body. She said her excuse was so that she could go find Rachel's phone, that Rachel had lost her phone there. I do know the girls were really worried the cops catching on to them so Sheila went by herself once and took Rachel a couple of times and tried to move it better to different spots. For all we know that's not even the correct spot that Skylar died in. So this is from a family member informant. They reached out to me last summer, mm -hmm. shortly after our first publishing. Well, one of the theories that has been put out today is that Skylar may have known something that the girls were afraid she was going to share. Here is another tape from that same informant. The really, really, really big information that I'm hearing is that they have evidence that Rachel and Shelia were making a sex tape that they were really in a lesbian relationship together. And Skylar was the one who videotaped Rachel and Sheila were afraid that she would blackmail them with it. Skyler would have maybe made a threat to them that if they didn't hang out with her, she was going to show it to everyone and that's why they got rid of her. So, I mean, that's something that's in the ether that's just out there. What's your reaction to that? <laughs> yeah, right. Ridiculous. That's stupid. That's... Just more drama. Yeah, that's what it is, more drama. Yeah. When we come back, let's talk about what this couple, this mother and father are faced with doing now. And we're gonna talk about any red flags. This is a cautionary tale, as it's often been said, but for the grace of God go I.
What do we know about the people in our children's lives? We'll be right back. We can't do this show without you, our studio audience. If you're going to be in the Los Angeles area and you would like free tickets, go to drphil.com and click on Be in the Audience. Because we have a lot of fun here, don't we? Yeah. Or you can call 323-461-PHIL. Skyler was a great kid. She was just a fantastic little girl. Always looked out for others, tried to help her friends. The love she showed for me and Mary was absolutely phenomenal. Happy birthday. She was just like my little mini me. I mean, I gotta say, she was my world. I just love having her around every day because she was mine. Miss Cotter was our child. She was a good kid. And she had so much in front of her. Skyler was a daddy's girl, big time. We played softball, we played baseball, we played basketball, we played football. We did a lot of things that were a lot of fun. She always would just spout out, I love you, Mom, I love you, Dad. She'd walk through the room and see us, and whoever she saw first, love you, Dad, love you, Mom, It's what we miss the most. Not to you, I love you every day. I love you every day, every single day. Knowing that I created something that good. She was just awesome. Sorry. I missed her so, so bad. just unreal how much you can miss a person. She was, she was our world. What do we do from here? What do you do now? I, I tell you what, you, uh, you spend the rest of your life celebrating her life. Just like we've tried to do here is in showing the wonderful aspects of her so it's not all dark and forgotten. And at some point, and I hope it's today, you're going to forgive yourself for not being there to protect your daughter on that road that night. You know, it's so hard sometimes for people that look at these senseless crimes to be able to foresee it because our minds can't go there. I mean, we, we cannot imagine taking someone out and, and stabbing them to death. We can't even think about that. So how can we predict that something like that is going to happen? It's almost impossible. It was your job to love her and care for her and nurture her every step of the way. And from everything we can learn, from everybody we talk to, the two of you did that, and you did it very, very well. Thank you. You know, this is this has caught a lot of attention of a lot of a lot of people. Um, there was a book written about this. Uh, Daylene Berry have, have written about the savage murder of Skylar Niece and uh, the truth behind the headlines. She's here today. Daylene, thank you for being here and, and thanks for doing this. It, it does, it kind of weaves the fabric together in, in a lot of ways. What do you make of this and everything you've heard today? Well, my co-author and I believe that it's a big warning for parents to basically know who their children's friends are, not only who the friends are, but who the parents are, and um, try to just know them really well. Yeah, and it is a cautionary tale, isn't it? When we come back, what Dave and Mary want to say to Rachel and Sheila. We'll be right back.
Hey, Dr. Phil here. Did you know that more than 16 million kids in the U.S. are at risk of hunger each day? That's more than one in five children. Now, these are our neighbors, our kids that play in the neighborhood, co-workers, friends' children. The problem is closer than you would think, but so is the solution. Join me and visit feedingamerica.org slash hunger to find your local food bank to help. I'm Dr. Phil, and together, we are Feeding America. Stop justifying your inactivity and avoiding the challenge of change. For help getting started, go to DrPhil.com for 11 seasons of advice, articles, and exclusive videos you won't find anywhere else. Plus, sign up for the Dr. Phil community to share your story and find support from others, all on DrPhil.com. Well, we've been talking about uh, a tragic end uh, to one life and the destruction of two others ripple effect through families. Uh, it's, just a, it, it's just hard to even wrap your mind around. Uh, Dave, it, if Sheila and Rachel are watching this show, and what do you say to those two? You're both very sick. You're both where you need to be. And I hope you both get help, because you sure need it. I would just like to ask them why. Everybody grieves in a different way. Please love and support each other through this. Yeah. I mean, there will be days that you're doing pretty well, and you are just can't even get out of bed. Meet her where she is on that day. There will be days that his rage overtakes him, and, and he can't even put one foot in front of the other, and you're doing okay. And that's why the two of you are together. Meet each other where you are and accept each other's curve on the way you work through this and never think that the length and breadth of your grief reflects the depth and breadth of your love because people who grieve for a year don't love more than people who grieve for six months or love less than those who grieve for two years it's different for everybody and I, I thank you guys for being here it's been a help for them to hear from you, right? It has. And for, for you guys, you're, you're, you're very nice people, and <laughs> you, you've spoken very well about this. You've not tried to defend what she's done. Oh, absolutely it, But oh. I think it's good that you're here, and you two are using your life and Skylar's life to parents. You, you look at the message boards after this show. You go to my Facebook and see what people say, and they will thank God for the reminder that they got from the two of you. I know that's true. Uh, a special thanks to Daylene Berry, co-author of The Savage Murder of Skylar Neese, The Truth Behind the Headlines, which Dave and Mary Neese also uh, helped with putting together. The abbreviated ebook is available online now with the full story available in bookstores in June. For more information on today's show, please go to drphil.com. Thank you so much for being here. We'll get you copies of those pieces we did about Skyler's video.